Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how we can improve interior lighting to create realistic results. Stay around until the end of the video since that's where you'll find some of the most helpful tips. Alright, so to enhance our interior scenes, we can improve our scenes with two different types of lighting. Natural lighting and artificial lighting. To showcase all the ways we can use lighting, I'm going to take a scene that looks like a render with a basic setup, mostly set with Enscape default settings, and we're going to transform it into a more realistic render. In my opinion, the Enscape sun creates very harsh shadows, therefore I prefer to leave it at 2 or 3% for interior scenes. So we're just going to leave it at that amount for now, but later on in this video I will show you a more advanced technique on creating the best natural lighting without using the Enscape sun at all. So stay around for that. Another way that you can change the way natural lighting acts in Enscape is through HDRI images. If you're not familiar with HDRI images, they're basically panoramic images that can be used in 3D software to act as a light source for your scene or even as a background image to hide the horizon line. If you're wondering where you can get HDRI images, I will leave a link in the description where you can get plenty of them for free. So as you can see, we can add the HDRI right here in the visual settings. We just go to sky, click skybox, and then we load it up from the location that we downloaded the file on. As you can see, the sky and the lighting look very different than the default Enscape sky. You can play around with the plenty of HDRI images and see the difference between them. And then after that, you can just choose one that you like the most. A lot of people really overlook this since they use HDRIs just as a filler image for the background. But in fact, the materials in your scene reflect a lot of what the HDRI image contains and it just makes up for a different lighting and a mood throughout the whole render. To showcase this better to you, I am going to use different HDRIs in the same scene and you will notice how it will impact our interior. So as per artificial lighting, Enscape offers us a pretty good variety of light sources to use in our scenes. We can open the Enscape Objects tab and we can see all the options that Enscape offers like the sphere light source, the spotlight option, the line option the rectangular light and the disc light distribution. And each of these are used in different cases, but I myself most of the time use the first three. I want to go over the basics of how each of these light sources work first. And after that, I will share more advanced tips on how we can get the most out of these Enscape artificial lights. So let's get started with the sphere light. The sphere light is the type of light that you'd be using mostly on lamps, pendant lights, etc. And it is a source of light that sends out rays in all directions equally. It only takes two clicks to place the sphere light. One is to choose the axis on which it's placed on and the second click will place the light itself. You can also notice on the tab that you have two different sliders which lets us adjust the intensity and the radius of the light source. If you want to notice the effect on the intensity slider, I would recommend to turn off the auto exposure option in the visual settings and you'll be able to see how the intensity slider effects are seen better. The next lighting option is the spotlight. You can place the spotlight easily with four clicks and after placing the light source, you can notice in the objects tab that you can tweak the intensity and the beam angle through the sliders. It is important to place the light source outside of your light objects like the ceiling lights so the object itself doesn't stop the light to come through. In fact, you should apply this principle with any other light type as well. And if you ever wonder about the range of these lights, the maximum length for a spotlight is 10 meters or around 32 feet. You might also consider that you'd want to use IES profiles as well for this type of lighting. And if you haven't heard of an IES until now, it's basically a file that provides more photorealistic lighting effects in your rendered images than other types of default lighting distribution. You can get plenty of them for free at ieslibrary.com and you can upload it fairly easy in Enscape through the object tab in the load IES profile section. So right after I load up the IES file, you can see the default lighting distribution that Enscape offers is replaced with an IES that I truly believe that brings better results to our scene. The other type of lighting is the line light, which can be used for indirect lighting or some LED lights. And they have the shape of a tube in our SketchUp tab and their range is about 3 meters or close to 10 feet. But if you need longer lights, you can always multiply them. 
You can also use the sliders in the Enscape Objects tab to tweak the intensity as well as the length of the line lights. And honestly, I don't really want to waste your time with the rectangular and disc option. They work the same way as the other light sources, but they just emit different shapes through the lighting distribution. Another basic tip that I want to cover for all the light sources is that the color that the Enscape objects naturally emit is plain white and that might not be suitable for all of your design choices. If you would want to change the color that the light source emits, you can easily apply a material or color that the Enscape library offers through the bucket tool. Once you put the color or material on top of the light source, you can notice that it emits a different color and it brings a different mood throughout the whole scene. Another tip that I feel like I should mention is that if you copy a light source to another position or place in your scene, that copied object becomes an instance of the original one. This means that any change in the parameters of the copied objects will affect all the other objects as well. This does not include changing the color of the light source. In order to do that, you would have to select all the light sources that you want to change the color of first and then apply the color through the SketchUp bucket tool. Another tip that might be useful for you is using emissive lighting. For example, if you want to light up the light bulb, you can change the material option into self-illuminated. You can use this in other instances as well, like in the example right here. I put a spotlight under the recessed lighting, but the light doesn't actually show as lit up. To make it more realistic, I can select the light surface through the eyedropper tool and then in the materials editor tab, I can switch it to a self-illuminated and that way it actually looks like there's some light coming from inside of the object. Another cool option that the Enscape settings offer is that if you ever feel like the artificial lighting is coming off too harsh in your scene or it's too low or too weak, you don't have to go through each of the light sources and turn it down through the intensity slider in the Enscape objects tab, but instead you can go ahead and open the visual settings you can go to the Atmosphere tab, the Illumination section where you can find the Artificial Lighting slider and you can play around with it to your liking. Alright, so now that we got the basics down, we can move on to some more advanced methods on enhancing our interior scenes. But before we do, if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel since I will be uploading a lot more videos sharing a lot more value in the future. So let's first tackle the issue that we had with the Enscape Sun. So what I do in an ideal scenario is that I turn the sun intensity down to 0% and I replace the Enscape Sun with spotlights to mimic a more realistic sun which creates very soft shadows to our scene since that is what I usually go for when I create renders. To help create even softer shadows, I usually prefer to leave the shadow sharpness in the visual settings almost at 0%. To replace our Enscape Sun, we're going to put some spotlights outside of our windows or openings and we're going to put them at a large beam angle and tweak their intensity and as you can see, I believe that this scene looks much more better. The purpose of these spotlights is to mimic the sun and that way it doesn't come out as harsh as the Enscape Sun comes out in our interior scenes. So if you want to take a look back to our Enscape Objects tab, there's a lot more that actually goes into those light sources in order to make our scene look much better. So for example, line lights give us soft shadows and act in a way as ambient lighting. Enscape does offer a setting where you can increase ambient lighting or decrease it, but sometimes it is not enough and it doesn't make that much of a difference. So to fix this, we're going to use something as I call it fake lighting. When I first started rendering, I refused to use lighting outside of what my scene really contained since I thought of it as cheating, which it kinda is, but after some time I realized that most of these very high quality realistic renders are using artificial lighting where it doesn't really exist in order to enhance their scenes. So let me walk you through this. Uh, what we're gonna do is create some line lights and rotate them vertically and maybe make a copy of 7 or 8 of them. And the way you want to think about placing them is the same way photographers think about placing fill lighting. To simulate these lights, we would use the line lights just like I mentioned before. And as you can see, they bring quite a good amount of ambient lighting onto our scene. And by the way, if you want to only focus on the effect that the lighting is having onto your scene, 
I would suggest you to turn down the saturation down to 0%. So that way you're not distracted on how the materials look and act and you'll be able to see how the lighting you've placed is acting in your interior scene. So another component that I like to incorporate is to use the rectangular light distribution to create more contrast in our renders. To do this, we'll create one rectangular light source and we'll multiply it four by six or anything similar to that is fine. And we're going to rotate each one of them a little to different directions from one another. After you have rotated them, we will put them right in front of our linear lights where you can see that they will bring a lot more contrast into our scene and bring out the quality of the materials and the models that you have used in your render. So this is our final result for our scene as far as lighting goes. Next video I'm going to cover rendering composition which is another fundamental skill in order to create high quality renders. So make sure to subscribe to the channel in order to be notified when that video comes out. Thank you for watching, make sure to check out my Patreon, leave a like in the video and I will see you on the next one.